Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Today for the Totally Techniques Design Team Blog Hop, we are featuring Emboss Resist as our technique. Oh my gosh, this one is an oldie buddy goodie. I absolutely love Emboss Resist. And there are many different ways that you can achieve this technique. I am going to be using the Nature Sweetness Suite, brand new in our new spring mini catalog. This has two sets of dies, two stamp sets, designer paper, some faux leather, some beautiful cork rounds. It is filled with gorgeous product. Let's flip the camera around and I'll show you how to do the technique and a couple cards that I made. Today for my emboss resist technique, I decided to go with water. I love the beautiful effect you get when you use water on watercolor paper for a type of a wash background. And while I have done lots of emboss resist with stampin' or I should say with blending brushes or with sponge daubers, um, this is a lot of fun and it, you get a different result every single time. So I'm going to start off with Fluid 100. This is our beautiful watercolor paper. Um, it is 100% cotton. You get 10 sheets that are, I believe this is 5 by 7. I was correct. So 5 inch by 7, 10 sheets, very high quality, very thick watercolor paper. I'm also going to bring in our water painters. Now our water painters have three different sizes. We have a very small brush, we have a medium sized brush, and then we have a big brush. I'm going to be using the big one for this um, water coloring technique. So first thing we're gonna do is we need to emboss. So this is emboss resist. We're gonna do embossing first. I'm gonna bring in my embossing Editions Toolkit. We've got the fabulous stamp, and I should say it's not Stamp Buddy, it's the Embossing Buddy. And this keeps your embossing powder from sticking any place else other than where you have stamped it with the Versamark ink. So we're going to grab our images. Now, I said, hang on just a second, I was using the Nature Sweetness bundle suite of products that has two stamp sets in it and I'm using um, several stamps out of the notes of nature and then I brought in this little like label stamp that says field lawn and garden this is a very eclectic shabby chic type of um, suite and so I just wanted to let you know I'm using this one out of here and the rest of them are coming out of the notes of nature so we've already used our embossing buddy here. We're going to grab our stamps. And because I'm stamping Versamark on white for my watercolor paper, it's a little tricky to see what I'm doing. But just trust me and know that there are images being stamped on here. And you'll see that a little bit better when I put the embossing powder on. We're just going to take this image and stamp it right up here. And now I'm keeping track of, in my head, where I'm stamping these things. So just rest assured that I know it may look like I have no clue what I'm doing, but I really do know where I'm going with this. We're just going to keep stamping these pretty images. And again, you will get to see this when we get a little bit further here. And I'm just kind of moving them around. I want them to be very random. And then I'm gonna come in with these dots and we're gonna kind of fill in here. And at this point, I'm pretty much just guessing where I need to stamp. Now, if there comes, a, once we get the powder on here, I will be able to know if I need to do some more stamping. And here comes, I'm using white powder. I actually tried this technique today with the clear embossing powder. That was not a good choice because 
it was super hard to see and our clear embossing powder is very thin powder as is this but it seemed to it seemed to not emboss well on the watercolor paper it embosses well on regular cardstock but the watercolor paper it just didn't work well with okay so now you can start seeing where we're going here with our embossed images. I'm just gonna make sure that I've got everything covered here. And I think I'd like to do just a couple more images. So I'm gonna bring that Versamark back in. And let's see, let's take, where'd those polka dots go? Right here. I think I'm just gonna put a few more polka dots right over here to fill that in a little bit. Maybe just a few right there. I think that's gonna do it. Always cover your ink pad back up so you don't get powder in it because getting embossing powder out of your Versamark ink pad or any ink pad for that matter, it does not go well. Like you can't, <laughs> that's what I mean. Okay, that looks really good. I'm quite happy with that. I just gave it a little blow there with my mouth to get um, some of that extra powder off. I'm gonna close this up so we don't have any accidents. And we're gonna heat set this with our heat tool. In the um, embossing additions toolkit, you get all of these little tools plus this little tray. So I'm gonna use my tweezers to hold on to this. I'll be right back. All right, now that we have this embossed, I also took the liberty of stamping this little strip. This is three quarters by five and a quarter. This, by the way, is three and three quarters by five. And I also stamped and embossed this little piece. So here comes our water. I've got a piece of paper towel here. I like to have a little cup of water when I'm doing a watercolor wash. I need to clean this last stamp off, hang on. And now we're gonna add some color. So I've got um, Missy Moonlight, Boho Blue, and Pebbled Path here, which was really surprising, the color that the Pebbled Path turned. And different colors have different pigments in them, and they react differently to um, various mediums. So you're going to be surprised also. I am going to pop open these ink pads and what I really like to do you could use um, your ink refills also but I like to use a block to get my ink ready for use for techniques this is what I like to do so we've got the misty moonlight the boho blue and the pebbled path so the first thing when you're using watercolor paper to do this technique, you definitely want to get your paper wet and you wanna get it very wet. This is kind of soppy wet actually. And it's a little frightening because you know it's paper and you're throwing water at it. But remember, this is watercolor paper and this is what it is designed for is to be wet. So now I'm going to, let me pull my sleeves up here. I'm going to bring in some more water and we are going to start with our technique and watch me just touch that. I recently showed everybody a watercolor wash technique um, and now we're doing the emboss resist. So this is really fun. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush out. I am going to go with the Boho Blue, which is a little bit lighter. It doesn't have a big difference from the Misty Moonlight. It's just a little bit less. If you need to, you can add more water to your layer also. So don't be afraid to do that because you definitely want this to be very wet. Now I'm gonna pull that pebbled path in here and we're gonna have less dramatic effect because my water is drying already, but look at how cool that is. And you can color in all the white spots or you can leave some of them white, which I think is a very neat look also. Lots of water in here. Bring some of this in. And I think I like that. I think let's add a little bit more right here. There we go. And it just does its thing. I really think this is cool. Now, I'm going to set this aside. We've got this new glass mat 
that is available to um, people when they join Stampin' Up. So um, it also comes with the silicone mat and I've been setting my things on here to dry, which works out really good. Now we're gonna grab this and I'm going to again, give it some water. I should have just waited because it really needs to be wet. And then we're going to, I'm gonna pull in a little bit more of that pebbled path here. I'm going to get my brush nice and wet and we're going to bring this in here. And now you can see that work its magic, how it just spreads out, which I think is so cool. This has water in it. The water painter has water in it and you can squeeze that to bring out more water as you're working with it. But when I'm doing a wash like this, I really like to have more water and that's why I use this little cup. It works really good. I'm gonna pull another, just a little bit more color right in there. Okay, and we are also going to set that aside to dry. If you need to, you can take your paper towel, you can mop up any water off the edges that might be pooling. Don't be afraid to do that. Let's see if I can get this off of here, there we go. I'm just gonna lay that up there. You can rinse off your blocks. These are just acrylic blocks that I use to mount my stamps on. And then the um, glass mat comes with a cleaning cloth. And I love that my surface is all clean again. I keep it in a clear stamp case to keep it moist. It does dry out pretty fast. You just add water and squeeze it out and away you go. Okay, now I already have a piece that is dried. You can hit this with a heat gun and dry it faster. But I just kind of set mine aside and let them dry on their own. So that's what this is. You know what, I'm gonna have to hit this because I do not have another piece of that. So hang on, I'm gonna find my tweezers. I don't wanna burn my fingers. These tweezers are so nice, they're reverse tweezers. They come with that um, embossing editions toolkit. I'll be right back. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna set that aside now and we are going to put our card together. So I've got a basic white thick card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've already scored it at five and a half and we'll burnish that edge good. Then I've got a piece of Misty Moonlight, this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And I'm just going to mount this right on here. It gives us a really thin blue border around our technique layer. You wanna use a pretty sturdy adhesive. I've got Seal Plus here, and I like to use that with watercolor paper because it kind of buckles a little bit when you do watercolor techniques with it. And I just find that this will really hold it down well. And again, that's Seal Plus. Oops, hang on, I got some on my finger. There we go, <laughs> that was crazy. It really sticks. All right, let's see if I can get this on here straight. Oh, that looks pretty darn good. I'll lift that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got our fabulous border around here. Now I'm gonna bring in my liquid glue. I only use the seal on that watercolor layer. Oh my gosh, isn't this just stunning? I like these colors, they're more masculine colors, although you could, you know, you could use them to give this card to um, a woman. This I'm gonna put on the inside. And I thought this would look really cool, just going right down the inside. So while you're already doing your watercolor technique, these are great ways to use up watercolor paper scraps to add to the inside. This is three quarters by five and a quarter, and I think that's just kind of striking. I love it. One thing I forgot is an envelope, so we'll get that out and be able to do that. Okay. Um, 
Next, what I did is I took the just a little note to say hello. That is in the Notes of Nature stamp set. I white embossed that onto some Misty Moonlight cardstock. I'm going to just cut those edges off at an angle. And this is a three and three quarter, or I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch wide. Hang on a second because it looks like. I need to cut this at a little bit more of an angle. There we go. I just want it to be pretty even. And then I took these dies. These are the, da, 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 let me make sure I'm giving you the, the correct information here. These are the Notes of Nature set of dies. And oh my gosh, both of these set of dies that go with this suite are fantastic. I used these and I chose this one. Oh, I was gonna do this one on the top and I forgot, but I do have a card I can show it to you. I was gonna do this on the top of the watercolor layer, completely forgot to do that. There's a label in here. I used this one, this one, this one, and this one. I love all these little elements, really um, make a card spectacular. So let me show you what I die cut here. Here's all kinds of bits and pieces. So I just started die cutting and I've got colors that we used here. I've got colors that I used from my other card. Here's another one right here. Let me just make sure I've got all my bits and pieces in here. And then I thought I'll figure out what I wanna do from there. So let's just set that over here. Keep all of these together. I am going to grab some dimensionals. I know that I want my sentiment layer raised up on dimensionals. And I always find it so um, crazy how stunning these types of cards look when you start adding things to them like this. So the one thing that I wanted to say that really surprised me is Pebbled Path is kind of a brownish gray, but when you add it to watercolor paper, it kind of goes along a little bit more with pecan. So I chose the pecan pie for my leaf dye here. And I just thought that went together really well, right? It's kind of crazy. Okay, so... I am going to do just a little bit of trimming here. I'm thinking that I'll have this come through just like this. So I'm gonna cut this off right about there. And I'm not gonna glue this down yet. Whoops, I just wanna see what's going on. See what we're gonna do here with this piece. We're gonna do something like that. Um, this is boho blue out of that little sprig. Then we have basic white. We also have the Misty Moonlight here. Cute little sprig. I don't know if I want to come out the bottom like that. I don't think I do. I think I'm going to leave it right at the top. I, I like this. I think this looks good. Okay, so you could glue these pieces in or you could take a piece of tape I'm going to take a piece of scotch tape and I'm going to cut it thin so it's going to go right behind my sentiment. Make sure that I get all those little pieces caught under there. just thought that was the easiest way to do this. Ooh, I did want one of these though. Hang on. I wanted a little bit of this misty moonlight. Let's throw that in here. Can we throw that in here? How about if we put it, oh, I like it right there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to the back of this. And this is the fun part, when you just die cut a bunch of coordinating colors and then you can do all kinds of things with them. That Then you can start arranging and I think that's fun. Here we go with our sentiment. Make sure I have this on here straight. I do. Isn't that pretty, you guys? I just love this. Uh, we're gonna grab those. Um, these are adhesive backed cork rounds. They're pretty cool. I think they're fantastic for um, masculine cards, but I really like them with these shabby chic cards that I've been making too. Because I think they're just really, they add a lot. That's a, a little, very different accent. 
Okay, so we've got this, we've got this. Let's get an envelope out here decorated. I'll put these in with my dies and keep them for future cards. So I'll have lots of um, bits and pieces already die cut. And I think what I wanna do here, let's just stamp this with the Misty Moonlight. That's gonna look pretty cool. Right on our envelope. And then, what else do we have here? We have these leaves. I think that would look great. I'm going to use the uh, pebbled path for the leaves. Yep, that's it. Now we have a matching envelope to go with our fantastic card. I did tell you I was going to show you another color combination. I also tried out Wild Wheat with the Berry Burst, and that's why you've got some, some different colors in here besides what we just made here. Here is the card that I made with the Berry Burst and the Wild Wheat. I, are, I also tried to use Powder, or I'm sorry, uh, Bubble Bath. It's a very light pink. Let me grab that. Bubble Bath. Uh, but you couldn't hardly see it. It didn't. It got drowned out by the Berry Burst. But this was an interesting color combination. I still don't know how I feel about it. I think the card is beautiful. I just don't know about the color combination. It, it may grow on me. But here is that die that makes that notebook top on here. And it's actually perforated. You could tear that off if you wanted to. That's what I wanted to do over here, but I forgot. So there we go. And I stamped the inside of this card. We have the watercolor technique on the inside of this card. Emboss Resist with a watercolor wash. I think this is gorgeous. I hope you guys will give this a try. It is so much fun. You're going to find all the dimensions and ingredient list, all the colors that I use. I'm even going to put um, the color combinations, where I got these color combinations from. They came right from the color coach. So you can see that on my blog at www.astampabove.com. And you're going to find a link right up here that's going to take you there. Please know that this is celebration for every $50 that you spend between now and the end of February. You get to choose a free item. We do have some fantastic free items in the celebration brochure. If you would like a copy of the mini catalog and the celebration brochure and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please feel free to contact me. My email address is kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at astampabove.com. And as always, I always appreciate your orders. That's what keeps me in business. Make sure you click this link up here to head over to the blog hop. There's going to be other examples of the Emboss Resist technique from the Totally Techniques design team today. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Bye-bye.